Hi everyone, this is Amanda Watson from MrsWatsonEducation.com, my personal blog where I share with you the other fabulous teachers of the world, some things I've picked up along the way. And I'm going to tell you, this is a follow-up to my first OneNote um, video I made, uh, like last week I posted. This week I've been in pre-planning, so I've been able to work with other teachers and show them how to do this at my school. I've also been able to use them as guinea pigs and make teams and add them as students and have them make a team to add me as a student. So in the last like four days of work that I started this week, um, we have a long pre-planning thank you district um, I've been able to learn so much that I want to share with you immediately so that's what this tutorial is about a teacher guide specifically using assignments and grading within teams it's an all one-stop shop I love it there's so many things about teams I didn't know about Tuesday of this week that I've learned um, this week and you, I hope you love it. So um, this is going to go directly with uh, that OneNote tutorial I did on the how to use OneNote set it up. So this is kind of the add-on to it to get it to the next level. So I'm going to share my screen and show with you. Um, I Just in my teams, I'm going to go to a team I made for... Um, for this purpose to show you these tutorials. Okay, so you have your posts, you have your files. Hopefully you know how to use those. You can add any files for students to see. Um, class notebook. So um, I've recently just got my, I had my coworker, she's awesome. She um, had her make a team with me so she could add me as a student so I can make tutorial videos. So I'm gonna have two posts on that as from a student view that you can use and how to use this. Um, but there's some things I've learned about OneNote, some other quirks that I figured out how to work around, okay? So the first thing is that you will want to likely, if you can, number your pages in a section of a. Oh, I, I'm gonna delete, I'm gonna show you why. Okay, number your pages in a section of your notebook. So this is a notebook. I could have multiple notebooks. A science fair packet. I could have unit one, unit two. This is in my teacher only page, right? Um, but when the reason why you want to number it is if you send it or distribute it to your students in mass, so you want all pages at once going to the student which I'm going to tell you why I don't recommend doing that in the moment um, unless you really need to but what's going to happen is it's going to all the files are going to start loading and getting distributed to the students all at once and the files are the pages that are more compressed and easier to send will go to the students notebooks first and that might not necessarily be in the right order right so if you have it numbered like this you can go into that student's notebook and actually organize it a through like by alphabetical order a through z and because the numbers will be in sequence that will make it a very easy fix for you otherwise you're gonna have to drag and drop or teach the students to just find the page you're looking for which can get complicated so that's a tip i'm if you're going to do a mass import do that that way another thing i've figured out and i might be wrong but this is what i've gathered so far is that if you make a team and you add your students before you make the notebook, right? Then you are going to have to import each of the pages to the team. But if you make a notebook before you add students, like say the science fair packet, I it's a set thing. It's something I'd hand out to my students my first week of school. So I nothing's really changing. So if I want to put that and distribute that to a pay or a packet, so I'd have um, in my student section, I'd go in here to the managed notebooks and I'd have in their copies because you won't see it until you have students which is kind of a difficult thing I'd have my science first section that you can see I might have a unit one section but the science first section that I would have I'm going to close that now I don't have students yet but if I make the science fair packet right and then I distribute it to that section before I add students. That means when students log in and get their, um, their um, on Teams, when you start enrolling them, they'll have the whole thing there for them. You don't have to individually distribute, which is really nice, okay? Um, another thing I learned is that when you distribute pages, it won't necessarily distribute the indentation. So originally I had, for each um, graded part, I had a sub page that I made. You can see right here, see the untitled page is offset a little bit just for sequencing because it was going to be a page with a tutorial about this assignment. And I'm like, oh, that's great. It could be in one place for and then the subsection. Um, unfortunately, the subsections don't translate over right now. I, I heard in the blog that they're trying to work on that. So I'm like, well, if it doesn't translate over, I'm not going to do it. So I'm going to just delete that page instead. And what I decided to do, because I wasn't going to use the content library as much, is that what I decided to do for this purpose is for all of my tutorials, I went ahead and instead of making them sub pages I just put them in the content library and once again I ordered them um, 
by number so one through so all my tutorials zero so they're numbered so the same reason so I could sort them if I need to very quickly and um, so for that same page the tutorial that would have been connected to it in their packet which they're not writing on so that doesn't make sense is all right here for them to read and watch the videos now now that I have student view um, and I could show you what that looks like really quickly I have a whole um, video series that's going to be on the student to help students navigate this. But if I go to class notebook, I'll show you what that looks like. And by the way, student view is much friendlier. Okay, there's less less things going on. So if I go to this is my student view. This is me as a student for my awesome coworker, Miss Crane. Um, she was able to help me out with this. Go, Miss Crane. Um, so if I go to my content library, I could see those same pages. And I can see, you see its content. You don't have any of the features except for the immersive reader or opening in the app as your options. So, which makes it a little bit simpler for students to navigate. Of course, in the science for packet part, you have all the pages there um, numbered and you have all the draw features because that's what students will have to do to complete the activities. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my, my test one to show you some more things I figured out. So, okay. So the next thing, I said at the very beginning, you can distribute all your pages at once and you sort them by and number them so it's easy to sort. So I just did that just in case. Um, I would not recommend doing that for anything like, so the content library, yes, it's not graded. I'm gonna, I could distribute that well ahead of time. But for my packet, that I want students to be working in throughout, um, it's pretty much all the way from beginning of school to, the, to um, November, end of November, um, I might be distributing that page by page as we work along. So in their science for packet, I might have it start off by distributing these first three pages because those are just getting started information pages that are part of the packet that they would see and need to know to be able to answer their question selection worksheet. But here's the thing, when you distribute the pages, so you'd go here, class notebook, distribute the page, do that in sequential order so that then, and then wait for it to get loaded in. So then before you do the next page, so it will load in and your students will see it in the same sequential order. The next thing I'm going to recommend you do is any page that you want them to be a graded assignment where they write in it and do work that you're going to grade. If it's something that they're just doing like rough draft that you're not grading, then don't worry about it. Distribute it like I just said. But if it's going to be a graded assignment, don't distribute it to your students. I'm going to tell you why. Because Teams has this wonderful feature called assignments. And if you go to assignments, you can create a new assignment. Now you can create a quiz, so that's going to be a Microsoft form that they can go through and complete and they'll send you the data. Um, you can complete an assignment and this is going to be from scratch, right? Uh, I'm going to show you kind of what that looks like. So if I do question selection, right? Worksheet. I can add directions if I want. I can add a rubric. So this is really cool. And I'm going to show you in a completed one in the future, but you could go through, um, you can, if you have a rubric that you made in any other team, because it's all linked, you can just click on the rubric you want to use, which is very, very cool. Um, you can assign points. You could do all that, but look here in resources. This is where you add the assignment. So you can add from your computer, a Word document like this. And this is gonna be just a Frankenstein assignment just to show you the options. So it's done. So this is a Word document. Now, if I go here and say students can't edit, it's going to look to them, like, it's going to look to, um, just like a read only. So it's just a resource page. But if I click where it says students can edit their own copy, well now, they're going to get a copy of it and it's going to be able to be written in and they're going to be able to work on it and submit it to you. So you can add, um, so that's a really, really cool feature. Um, and I'm going to show you kind of what this looks like in a second. I'm gonna go through just setting it up. You can also add a link. So if you have a Nearpod link or anything else link that you like a Google form link, you could add it there. You can add a notebook link. So this is where I said, don't share those pages that are assignment pages with your students until you do it this way. So go into your teacher only, go into your packet. Remember, I wanted to share that page four. Remember it's out of order because it was in the sequence. So page four is the one I wanted to share. I'm going to attach it there and look, 
So it picks the, pe um, the question selection worksheet that I already created in my teacher packet. And look, it's going to say choose the section for the student. So if you had science fair, if you had unit one, unit two, you pick the, air, the notebook that you want it to go to, you'll hit done. And that means for this assignment, the students are going to, when they click on it, it's going to be in their class notebook and it's going to distribute it to them through the assignment way versus through the direct way. Now, the reason why you want to not do it twice, so you don't want to distribute it this way, because if you distribute it this way and then make an assignment, the students will have two copies of that page in their notebook and it, that's going to get confusing and if they work on one page, it won't be necessarily the one that you're grading. So they'll be like, I did all the work, but it's not the one you see, um, even though you can't, it's just an extra steps, right? So distribute the pages you want that they're not grading. When you get to a graded assignment page or page in your notebook, let's distribute it through the assignment tabs so you can see that. So I'm going to um, quickly just show you. You can create from existing. So if I go here, I'm going to um, upload the science fair final report. I'm going to do both. So I'm going to do this one so I can show you kind of what this looks like. And it's just basically importing my rubric, my grading from another course that I did. So that's great if you have multiple sections. Also, um, so I'm going to show you this right here too. Your rubric. So this is a rubric that I had. You could download it and import it to different classes as well. You can assign it to multiple classes. So if you have multiple like sections, you can assign it all in one place. So you can make it in one group team and assign it multiple places. This is another feature that is something I think from the blogs I watched is newer to teams. The defaults on don't don't assign to students added to this class in the future because if that makes sense if you have a student that gets into your class quarter two you don't want them to be, go into teams and have 17 assignments that they had to do from quarter one as well you want them to start fresh at quarter two so that's why that's the default but in a project like this for science fair right that's a long-term project they can't just jump in halfway through they have to do it all you would want to select assign to all students added to this class in the future so that any student that comes in next later we'll get that same assignment okay um, next thing due date you have the due date okay that's easy to click but you also if you go into there you have the option to schedule a date to assign it so you could work ahead of time and say okay it's not going to get assigned to the students until two weeks from now so they're not overwhelmed your due date which is standard and a close date so you might want to have a close date so for example it's due on the Friday but I'm going to let students that want to turn it in late, turn it into me the next Tuesday. So you have like a grace period before the assignment closes. For me, that's the end of the grading period. If they turn it in late, it's still late, but they have the whole grading period to get that done. So you could edit that. And that's really, really cool. So if I assign this, right, I basically just imported the assignment. I can see it. Now the problem is, and it went to my feed, you'll see it right here in the feed section. Um, I don't have students in this class, so you wouldn't be able to see it, but if you have students, it'd have their names, it'd have the assignment, it would show you if they viewed the assignment, if they completed, if they turned it in, and this is what the assignment looks like for the students. So you can see it looks very clear. You have your name, the instructions, if you had instructions there, you can see this is the reference materials. Remember I said you could upload something and make it not be like just visible to them, but not their own copy. So this is something that they'd be able to see. They can make it larger, but they don't have to turn it in as part of the assignment. This right here is their copy. It said student work. So it's going to open it up for them, right? And they have to type it in, edit the document, right? And that's really cool. So they could type it in and it's their copy and they share it with you and it's going to be great. Um, and then they could see the rubric. They could see the rubric right away of what they're going to be graded on. Um, the rubric's really easy to navigate and work through too. So that's really cool. I'm going to show you another version of the assignment. So that's just a regular like Microsoft. Um, oh, you can edit it after the fact too, which is nice. So if I go back into assignments, sorry, it's taking some time to think. And I'm not patient. Okay, so I'm going to create a new assignment. I want to show you another one. Um, actually, I'll show you from scratch. No, I already did. Sorry. From existing, I'm going to show you the graded um, question selection. So I'm going to go here. This is the place I already made it. Science Fair question selection worksheet. Open that up. I could go through, do all, change everything, add resources, right? This is going to edit their own copy, but look, this is in notebook. So remember, it makes their copy in notebook, like I said. Um, I can assign to all students. I can assign to specific students. I can assign to multiple sections, due dates, make that assignment.
and if you click on it student view you're going to see they're going to see everything you put in there and when it opens it up it opens it up directly to the OneNote page that they could type in that they can write in that's connected to their OneNote assignment um, their notebook in 365 in the app everywhere so it's all linked up together and that is so cool now last thing I'm going to talk to you about this second to last thing I think there's two more things is the grades now of course I don't have students in this test one but you can see um, for each assignment you assign you're going to be able to see the student name you're going to see the points they got if they turned it in if they viewed it so some students like are like I've been working on that for three weeks like, you have even viewed the assignment so that's kind of a great way to track um, you can export so this is the problem um, teams is not integrated to my gradebook system which is focus um, yet and hopefully they'll add that in the future so I have to ex uh, just either split screen and see my gradebook right here and just transfer it over over or export it into the Excel spreadsheet and transport it that way as well um, so it's just one step you have to do but I think overall for all the benefits of having my students go to one place to see me for their classes to get their notebooks to get their assignments to get their quizzes to get their grades I think it's well worth the time um, and then the second then the last thing I want to share with you is this I figured out with other teachers now if you make a team so this is my science for test team. I'm going to get it all prettied up and make that, um, and I'm going to add my other departments. I'm science for coordinator at my school, so I have to make this all to distribute to my students, my teachers. So if I add anyone to my team as a teacher, they become co-owners of the notebook and they can edit and add it to it. But if you instruct them, like, so I'm creating this whole science fair packet in OneNote and all the assignments in OneNote, if I add them as a co-teacher to this trial PLC packet one, right, this, our team that's like the trial one, they will then, then be able to, when they make their courses, so maybe they have periods one through six, they will be able to, as co-teachers to this one, they'll be able to assign the same notebook and the same assignments that I created in this team to their students without having to import anything else just by clicking a button because they are co-owners of all the work I've done here. Um, so that's a great way to share resources with your PLCs and with your team members. So I think that's it for right now. Um, lots of stuff, and I know this is a longer video again. Um, OneNote is kind of complicated, but I love the integration within Teams. I love it's a one-stop shop for my students. Oh, finally, the last thing I want to share with you too, sorry, I'm going to go back to my screen, is if you didn't know, this is not the only options you have for Teams. You can come up here and hit the plus sign, and you could actually make other tabs that are quick links for your students to use. For example, I'm going to link my Bitmoji class website into my Teams by just clicking here, entering the URL, and then my students will have access in one click to my Bitmoji classroom where I put my, my agenda for the days at. I have a whole blog series on how to do that if you'd like. Um, I use Nearpod a lot, so I'm going to click and link it to Nearpod, but watch. They have so many partners that you can click to. So any of these resources, if you use them, um, you will be able to link and connect it to your team so your students don't have to go in different places. And I think that's such a valuable feature right there. So just start playing with Teams and I think it's gonna be something that we'll all use not just for video conferencing and texting back and forth, but for actually using it as our classroom LMS platform. Um, I think it's a great tool. So hopefully this taught you some stuff that you can use. I'm still learning more stuff. I'm sure um, there's some things I'm like, oh, I wish I would have said that or knew that before, but start playing with it because there's so many great features. So once again, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I still have more content to come. I learn stuff all the time. So I've learned this stuff this week. I wanted to share it with you now. Um, like my social media, go to my blog. Or, like I have like 32 blog posts right now and growing library of things that might be helpful for you. And please share these resources with others. We're all in this together and we need each other to survive. So thank you so much. Bye.